So we are here today with Rob Hasslinger at the Boston Data Festival. Rob, welcome. So you have a talk scheduled for tomorrow, which I want to get into in a little bit, sure, but you sure. are a uh, senior data scientist at MaxPoint. Can you tell us a little bit about MaxPoint? Sure. A um, bunch of things we do, but broadly speaking, we're a technology company that provides services for companies that want to do advertising campaigns, uh, particularly hyper-local campaigns, so getting people into brick-and-mortar stores. Uh, some of this is computational advertising, uh, one component of it, selling things on the web. That's actually the part that I work on. Um, so a lot of data science, a lot of machine learning that goes on behind the scenes there. Yeah, definitely a hot field um, advertising, uh, computational advertising. That's the right term I'm using. But your talk, just to get to your talk tomorrow, sure. so your talk is titled uh, Bayesian Logistic. Can you tell us about sure. your talk? Uh, so this is about, the talk's about a Python package that we've open sourced, BSD free right. clause license. So use it for whatever you like. Um, and it's uh, to do Bayesian logistic regression. So a little background here. Logistic regression, as I'm sure most people know, is one of the most commonly used classifiers, probability models out there for binary data. Um, what we found we were looking into, so one of the things you might want to do is you might want to have a model that continuously updates its beliefs about what the model should be as new data comes in. But we didn't find that capability right. in most common Python packages, such as scikit-learn. So the equations are pretty standard, so we coded it up and put it out there. And um, now you, what you can do is you can fit a model and then update it and update it and update it again instead of just refitting models every single time. Excellent. Um, so this is an, the particular approach we used. Uh, so most Bayesian approaches, you have to calculate a posterior, which is messy, and the standard thing is Markov chain Monte Carlo. There are approximation techniques, and the one we used is the Laplace approximation of the posterior, essentially approximating the posterior distribution on your parameters with a multivariate Gaussian distribution. And it makes the computation very fast, and oftentimes you don't lose too much in accuracy. It's certainly much better than if you are just doing a uh, standard fitting a model just without updating right. it as you go along. Very good. And that talk is tomorrow, and um, we are going to record that. So for those of you who are not going to be at the uh, Boston Data Festival, that is going to be on our website, opendatascience.com. So really looking forward to that. Um, so what problems you guys actually, it's great that you open source this, um, sure. because like I said, that's, that's always what happens when you're you know, software engineering, data science, you're working on a problem, you know, you're hoping that somebody else, you know, they have you listen for you, but it's yeah. often the case that it's, um, there's a missing piece, but, it's, um, but not everyone decides to open source that, so sure. what prompted that move? Well, you know, we, we just felt it was a good thing to do for the community. I mean, right. one of the things that we do, we actually have a lot of external collaborations with universities. We do a lot of research, oh, uh, sponsor a lot of interns, a lot of external research. So we have an interest in uh, open sourcing software, and, um, you know, it's just something we felt would be useful. Okay, that's great. And uh, if people want to contribute, um, how Absolutely. can you go about uh, so that? The, it's on our MaxPoint GitHub page. I don't remember the exact URL right now, but you can find okay. it. Uh, you can install the code just by uh, pip uh, install days underscore logistic from your command line. And certainly if people have anything they want to contribute, they're welcome to make suggestions. Excellent. Definitely, definitely a package worth uh, checking out. So I'm going to switch gears here for a little bit. Um, Rob, give us your 30-second bio. 30-second bio. I was originally a physicist. My PhD is in condensed matter physics back in the day. <laughs> Spent some time at the Santa Fe Institute and Los Alamos doing complex systems. Uh, I got into data science uh, because I was interested in neuroscience. I was interested in the brain. And oh the brain is a huge complex system with lots of data. So I spent 10 years doing statistics and machine learning uh, research within the context of understanding neural coding and information processing in the brain. Um, I got became a card-carrying industry data scientist about a year ago, actually. And it was actually through this conference here. I, there was a guy giving a talk uh, from Max Point giving a talk. Right. I liked the talk. I went and spoke with him, and he ended up hiring me, and here I am. Excellent. Come to uh, Boston Data Festival, change your life. Yeah, That's how it is. Job. Exactly. And um, you mentioned uh, something very interesting there, using uh, machine learning techniques in, um, to research neural coding. Sure. Can you tell us yeah, more about it's, it's that? Yeah, it's a fascinating field. So um, the human brain, or any brain actually, is composed of trillions of nerve, nerve cells, neurons, Right. that fire uh, what's called action potentials, these kind of uh, voltage spikes. And that's how they communicate. So okay. these are binary signals, but there's an awful lot of them. It's a very complex network. And making sense of these signals is a very difficult data science and machine learning problem. 
And historically, neuroscience has been in the field of small data uh, because experiments have been able to record one to ten neurons at a time. But that's changing. It's changing very rapidly with new uh, multi-electrode arrays and optogenetics techniques. So now what people can do routinely is record from hundreds, thousands more neurons at a time. And there's actually a big push through President Obama's uh, human brain, uh, the brain initiative, where it's an effort to fund new technologies for recording for many, many nerve cells in the brain at very microscopic scales. The question then is what do you do with that data? Right. So this is a machine learning problem, and it's a big data machine learning problem. So there's a lot of very interesting work being done there um, at where I was at MIT and also a lot of other places as well. Yeah, excellent. Um, yeah, because um, in the past a lot of big data infrastructure, so to speak, has been focused on small problems, but now you see it's, it's starting to uh, focus on these bigger problems and um, allowing big data to better interact with um, data science tools. So that's always been a hard problem. Um, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about using big data tools and data science models and sure. your yeah, experience I, I with that? Sure. I think we're at a very exciting time right now, particularly with Spark and you right. know, some of the other things that are allowing us to do truly distributed machine learning. Because historically, you know, you would have big data, you have tons of data stored on your Hadoop cluster or whatever, but what would you do with it? You'd take it out, you'd take it into R right. or Python or Pandas or whatever, and you turn it into a smaller data problem and you'd operate it on there. Now, uh, with Spark and MLib and all that stuff, we have the opportunity to truly do distributed machine learning. And that opens up a new uh, door for actually developing out machine learning algorithms that are truly parallel, that are machine learning uh, uh, distributed, that aren't right. simply let's just break up our problem into small chunks, but let's think about yeah. how to actually do machine learning at scale with big data in a really distributed environment. Okay, and so for people doing that out there, uh, apart from uh, Spark, um, any other favorite tools or? You know, I'm, I'm just getting going on yeah. this stuff myself. It's one of the things that I'm most fascinated at, uh, fascinated about. I mean, tools yeah. that I use, we use a lot of Python. We use, yeah. you know, we have our Hadoop clusters and our Impala and all that. And Excellent. We're playing with Spark now. And, uh, and we have a PySpark talk going on yes, the moment. Yes, PySpark talk that you dragged me out. Yes. Right, right. So, well, well it's, it's recorded, luckily enough, so yeah, <laughs> we'll get you back in there. Okay. Yeah. All right, Rob. Well, uh, listen, wonderful having you here at the uh, Boston Data Festival. Thanks for coming back again and being a speaker. And um, looking forward to your talk tomorrow. And hope to do this again. Thank you much. Thanks a lot, Shane. Thank you.